My next guest has waived her anonymity to share her story after being the victim of a sexual attack that made headlines around the world. Well, Chanel's book is called Know My Name and she joins me now from New York. Chanel, it's so good to talk to you. This is an astonishing book. Um, we certainly do know your name. Um, you decided to relinquish your anonymity and that must have been a huge decision to make. Yes, it was. Good morning, Lorraine. Thank you for having me. Um, I decided that I didn't want to spend the rest of my life shrinking and spending all of my energy concealing who I was. I understood that privacy was a huge luxury that I'd had over the course of four years, but I also knew that not being able to acknowledge the pain that I went through inhibited me from acknowledging the growth that I'd also been through as a result of that pain. And so I felt like everyone in my life was speaking to an expired version of me, an old Chanel that no longer existed. So I wanted to come forward and say, this is my story. This is where I am now and I need you to meet me here. And I also thought about what the final factor was in deciding to come forward. And the main thing holding me back was fear, fear of attack or blame. And I thought I didn't want the fear of what men might do keep me from being who I wanted and needed to be. Well, the reaction was astonishing. I mean, I'm sure you thought to yourself there would be a reaction, but it must have been quite overwhelming. It has been overwhelming, but also incredibly warm. I think I was preparing for battle in my mind and the reception has been so much kinder than that. I do book signings now where people line up and in each book they have a post-it note where they've written their name so that I can sign it. And as they come to my table, the pile of names and post-it notes accumulate like <laughs> leaves on my table and I keep all of them because these are the names of the people who have saved me. They have kept up with me in my journey for the last five years since the assault. And I think there were many, many times that I did give up on myself and I did not want to continue and I did not believe in my ability to transcend what had happened, but the public never gave up on me. And so this being here is my thank you to them. I mean, I remember, I remember this very, very well, Chanel, and being absolutely astounded, like the rest of the world was, in the leniency of the sentence for the person involved. It was something like six months and you only served three months. And the judge um, actually said that prison would have had a severe impact on this man and that his reputation had suffered because of the, the media reporting of the case. And there was nothing about you. And I think that's what made your statement, your victim statement, so impactful. You know, it was like, astonishing when, when we got to hear your voice. Yeah, and it's very strange looking back because after I read the statement in the courtroom and the sentence was delivered, I felt that I had failed. And I sat down feeling humiliated and wondered why I had gutted myself and shared all these touchy-feely things and wanted to just curl up and go home. And it wasn't until the next day when the statement was released into the world that I began to understand that what I had done was extremely courageous. And I owe it to others to slowly teach me who I am and what I had done. And then slowly being more and more in awe of myself and my confidence and capabilities. But it's very scary that an alternate reality had my statement not gone public would have been that I would have gone home thinking that I had failed and that I wasn't skilled at writing. And so for anyone who has a little courtroom of their own or whose world is being dominated by an authority figure, whether it be in a household or classroom I hope that if they are making you feel oppressed or giving you negative ideas about yourself, that you do not take their opinion at face value. Because if I had fully believed him and let his sentence dictate my worth, then it would have been wrong. And instead, the reality was that millions of people were moved by the things that I had to say. So do not underestimate your power and always seek a second opinion.
No, absolutely. I mean, that judge effectively lost his job. As we saw, your statement was read out in Congress. Your, your experience changed the law. I mean, you've done so much. And then, of course, the book, um, the response for the book has been, has been overwhelming as well. You know, it's been quite remarkable. Yeah, it's very exciting. And I remember even before the law or writing the book, my dad would always say, I'm so proud of you. And I thought, what the heck is he proud of? You know, all I do is sleep and I'm barely getting by. But now I fully understand where he was coming from. And for any victims who may be watching, I really hope you know to be proud of yourself in whichever stage you may be at, whether that just be getting up in the morning. That is an accomplishment in itself. And I hope you give yourself credit. And Chanel, there's, there is this thing which is so sad and, and so wrong that an awful lot of people who, who find themselves subjected to a sexual assault feel some sense of shame, which of course they shouldn't. And that's where I think your statement in your book is really making a difference to say to people, you've got absolutely nothing to be ashamed about. Absolutely. I was really intimidated by cross-examinations in the courtroom. All of those questions scared me. And only looking back do I realize how trivial they were. Questions about when did you have the champagne? Was it at 11.05 or 11.08? And then did you have the whiskey and a shot of what? And what were you wearing? And what kind of shoes? And where did you pee? And when did you pee? And all of these ridiculous, silly things. And I thought, we are asking victims the wrong questions. We need to be asking where my assailant got his confidence to do something like this and not only execute it, but when he was actually caught, what gave him the confidence to think that he could convince others that what happened um, was not severe and that people would easily overlook me and dehumanize me. You know, what propelled him forward and made him keep showing up in hopes that I would you know, wear out. And I think that's where we need to be directing our focus. Well, you're certainly doing as much as you can to change the whole process. Thank you so much for talking to us this morning. You're a remarkable woman. You really are. And the whole statement is in the back of the book. And um, even, you know, just reading that is quite extraordinary. Chanel, thank you so much. No, my name is out now. Thank you. Thank you, Lorraine. Oh. Remarkable young women. You can find helplines as well on our website too. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.